Salmon plied western waters for more than 100 million years, surviving the extinction of dinosaurs and cataclysmic land changes. And yet, in the last 30 years, humans have pushed Snake River salmon to the brink of extinction. Today, we face our last opportunity to save these historic fish. We must breach the four lower Snake River dams to bring back the salmon. He gathered all the people together and said that we are going to create the salmon people. And he asked for someone to step forward, a man and a woman, uh, to become the salmon. They were like a brother and sister to us. After they hatch, they live one to two years in the freshwater stream. Then something magical happens and they migrate to the sea. The salmon spend about one to five years uh, in the ocean, mostly feeding and maturing. And at some point, they get the sense that it's time to head back home. They find their way back to the Columbia River by sensing the magnetic pole. Then they smell the Columbia River. They shift to smelling sensors, and they smell their way all the way back home to exactly the same spot, the same sandbar or gravel bar from which they were hatched. They lay their eggs and then, then they die after laying their eggs. And this is all that the salmon adds, that they might spawn in their homelands, in their ancestral homelands, travel to the oceans, be free in many ways for a short time only to come back and to begin again. I was caught up in the same thing that everybody else was. A boy, for the good of the of the whole region, transportation, the electricity. It was progress, it was uh, a new payroll to the community. And everything is gonna be just pie in the sky. But uh, it didn't turn out that way. For tens of thousands of generations, Pacific Northwest salmon filled the Columbia River Basin by the millions each year. About half of these salmon spawned in and returned to its largest tributary, the Snake River. These legendary creatures survived massive geologic changes and the ice ages, returning to spawn year after year, fulfilling an incredible life cycle that runs from the depths of the Pacific Ocean to mountain streams hundreds of miles inland, sustaining the web of life wherever they go. The culture of native people revolved around the great fish, and when Lewis and Clark arrived, the Nez Perce tribe fed them Snake River salmon, helping them overcome starvation on their journey west. With the arrival of white settlers, salmon populations on all the rivers and streams of the Columbia Basin plummeted from overfishing and habitat destruction. The salmon of the Snake River, though, held on, and people cherished their wildness and spirit. But between 1961 and 1975, the federal government built four dams on the Lower Snake River in Washington. The intent was to help the region with transportation and energy, but the effect of these dams on salmon was deadly. It was portrayed in the 60s as we can have Lewiston's a seaport and four more dams, lots more power, and we'll build plenty of hatcheries and we'll save the salmon too. Don't worry you sportsmen, don't worry you Indian tribes, we can have our cake and eat it too. Well, the history is the judge. It's turned out to be a wrong promise. When it stopped, it didn't stop just a little bit. It just stopped. It was like they just put the concrete barrier in and the stream didn't run anymore. 
And in this case, it didn't have fish anymore. We've already lost three species in Idaho. A species that will never come back. And we're going to lose the rest of them if we don't do something. In 1855, the United States of America promised that native peoples, in exchange for giving up much of their land, would always have salmon. Removing the Snake River dams is the best way to restore these fish and honor our commitments to native peoples. We believe that if the salmon were to survive, then perhaps Indian people as well will survive with them that our children's children will be able to enjoy those things that their ancestors have enjoyed. Every year, fewer and fewer Snake River salmon return. Scientists now warn us that unless we remove these dams right away, we will lose all Snake River salmon in less than 20 years. These are the same fish that fed Lewis and Clark on their trip west. They're part of our history. They've been a, an important part of the economy of the Pacific Northwest. And people are starting to understand that we're at risk of losing them. We can learn from our mistakes of the past and fix it. We can bypass those dams. We can restore those salmon runs and save the salmon for all time if we act now. The decline of Snake River salmon after these four federal dams were built was dramatic, and something had to be done. Fish ladders were built to help the adult salmon migrate upstream, but the larger problem was that young salmon were not surviving the gauntlet of dams on their journey to the ocean. They're fighting to find their way through each dam, and about 5 to 15 percent of them are lost at each dam moving downstream. By the time they get to the ocean, they're stressed, they've run through turbines or spilled over dams, subjected to nitrogen, eaten by predators. They're exhausted. They're exhausted by the time they get to the sea, and they get to the sea a month and a half or two months late. They're out of sync with the whole system. The Corps of Engineers promoted an array of sometimes bizarre technological experiments to prevent the extermination of salmon populations. This included taking young salmon out of the river and barging and trucking them around the dams. This is the story of one of the Corps of Engineers' greatest achievements, as natural fish runs are protected by the Juvenile Fish Transportation Program. Decades of attempts to techno-fix the dams, costing billions of dollars, have still left the Snake River salmon at the very brink of extinction. We have barged and trucked and screened and bypassed and spilled and techno-fixed these dams for the last 30 years. Uh, and none of those solutions has fundamentally worked. The dams also violate the Federal Clean Water Act, even though they are owned and operated by the federal government. The degraded water quality compounds the problems for salmon. This system has so degraded to the point where we have put wheat and other commodities in the river, and we take the salmon out of the river. What we need to do is get the fish back into the river where they belong and restore the river to a measure of health. Getting the fish back in the river is exactly what scientists today recommend. A team of state, tribal, independent and federal scientists analyzed the salmon crisis in the most comprehensive salmon study ever done. They concluded that bypassing the four lower Snake River dams and returning 140 miles of the river to its natural state is the best choice for saving Pacific Northwest salmon. But we must act now because each year fewer and fewer salmon survive. The option with really the only substantial opportunity for saving the Snake River spring summers is decommissioning the dams and letting them naturally migrate down the river. The proposed bypass of these four federal dams will be a relatively simple procedure. The water behind the dam is drawn down and just the earthen portion is removed, 
allowing the river to run free. In the last 20 years, more than 250 dams have been bypassed or removed across the country to restore the health of rivers, fish, and surrounding communities. Bypassing the Snake River dams will actually save money. We have spent $3 billion to maintain them so far. Every year, the expense escalates, and American taxpayers could face paying huge reparations to Native peoples, tens of billions of dollars, if we break the treaties and let salmon go extinct. On the other hand, bypassing the dams will take an estimated one-time investment of less than $1 billion and will save the salmon. Removing the dams is good for the environment. It's good for the economy, and it's good for future generations. Do they look like little tiny weasy fish? But there's an obstacle to overcome, special interests. In the same way that polluting industries fought the Clean Air Act to the detriment of us all, today, special interests are working overtime to keep the Snake River dams in place, putting short-term profits over the common good, even if it means salmon extinction. This is why it will take citizen action to save the salmon. Now you watch there in the water, and you might see a fish jump, huh? This is so much bigger than the town of Lewiston, or in fact the state of Idaho, and in fact the entire region. This is about the welfare of the world. And this is, this is how big this is. We have a chance to do something that man doesn't usually do and that's to take care of a problem that he caused. Did you see one? Yeah, right there, swim. Salmon, Columbia River salmon are a national treasure. I don't think that a lot of people that live even outside this region want to see salmon go extinct. I'm able to come out here from a place like Pennsylvania uh, to take my vacations out here to fish here. But even if I were never to be able to return, um, just to know that these fish, these salmon are out here uh, in wild places would mean so much to me. I was sitting on a log and there was a salmon coming by and it was moving and it was staying in one spot and it was spawning. You actually saw it in real life and most people have never seen that. So it made me feel that I was special. The elder people, people get up and they will pray in our language for salmon, that they will return because they think of, of places like Wallula, of places like Pana on the Snake River that are now covered up because of these dams. They think about the areas where their villages were, about the uh, burial grounds that are covered up now. As we brought species like the bald eagle back from the brink of extinction, we now must act to protect the salmon. People in the region are ready to do what's necessary to save the salmon from extinction. Speaking on behalf of the board for Emerald People's Utility District, uh, extinction of salmon is not an option. Uh, we think we have a responsibility uh, not just to sell electricity here, but to take care of the environment um, that our constituents live in. These dams provide no flood control, and they supply less than 5% of the region's power. It's about 1,100 megawatts of power, um, 850 average megawatts, and that can easily be made up with conservation in the region. The reason that we must save the fish is, this is the reason right here. It's guys like him, and that's why we have to save the fish. We can find new and better ways to do the things we need to do in the basin, to have energy to transport goods and services and to grow important crops we can do that what we can't do is build salmon out of extinction removing the dams and saving the salmon will mean changes in how some agricultural goods are transported in the region barge traffic will shift from lewiston idaho nearly 500 miles inland to downstream ports on the columbia like pasco washington 
A comprehensive salmon recovery plan should include investments in railroads and infrastructure to move goods in the region and help affected farmers make this transition. If mitigation is done correctly, and we have investment being put into our, our railroad system and the highway system, we may actually end up with a stronger feeder system, a stronger railroad system to serve rural communities and agriculture to haul resources and inputs in and move their products out than we had before. Our experience here in the Northwest indicates that we will be big winners for recapturing this substantial environmental asset, this free-flowing river. And it's not just folks in Seattle or Portland. There will be winners out there in the 15 counties right around the Lower Snake. I'm not talking sort of ephemeral save the fish arguments. I'm talking jobs and incomes and prosperity. We know today that what's good for the environment is also good for our economy. Recovering the salmon of the Pacific Northwest will bring a richness of spirit and prosperity for our future. Well, for the North American Indian, they provide their, their, their spiritual well-being, their entire food source at one point. They provide us a food source. They provide us endless hours of sport fishing and wonderment. They, they provide us photography opportunities. They, they create jobs wherever they go. I mean, the salmon show up, guess what else shows up? The tourists, the fishermen, the photographer, the biologist. Everybody shows up. Then the gas stations show up and the stores show up to provide all the services that are related to our interest in the salmon. Bypassing the dams will mean tens of thousands of new jobs. It will mean reviving our fisheries, commercial, tribal, and sport fishing. What a there will be new recreational business opportunities. This will generate about $100 million year after year. And we will honor our treaty commitments. Yeah, let's hope she makes her way on up the river and lays some more of them just like her. Courage is what it's going to take. Uh, it's going to take courage to face down some of the special interests and bypass those dams and save these salmon. Well, individuals can take action by first of all expressing to their members of Congress their concern for these salmon, their concern for restoring the salmon runs to the Lower Snake and Columbia River. They can make a big difference. We have a responsibility as a people for not only for ourselves and our relationship amongst ourselves, but for the land in which we live. You look at a salmon going up a waterfall or making that journey home, and I think we want to identify with that. We want to say, that's me. I'm persistent. I will stick to it. I am sleek and I am strong. Yes, we want our children to enjoy something that their ancestors spoke of and taught of but we want the rest of the world as well to enjoy their history and their relationship with this species. But how can we if we fail to join together and act together? Right now, Congress and the White House are deciding whether to save our salmon or keep the dams. If you don't want to see the Snake River salmon disappear, you must make your voice heard right now. There is no time for delay, because delay means extinction. Send in the salmon postcards. Call and write your congressional representatives and the White House. Tell them to remove the four Lower Snake River dams and save our salmon. We need the salmon, and the dams don't make sense. <laughs>